And then Dennis says, there is where the sexual Walt begins. Waltz, excuse me. <laughs> sexual Walt. <laughs> Enter sexual Walt. Hello, welcome to Guide to the Unknown. I'm Kristen. And I'm her little brother, William. And this week, we are continuing our journey through weird psychos popping up in otherwise comedic shows. Yeah, and, and here we've got, I really think, maybe the big two. Yeah. Last are... week, we had a confirmed kill. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> you might say. Yeah. But these, I think, the ones that we're going to discuss this week, we're talking about, obviously, the Scranton Strangler. Yep, and Dennis from It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. I think these are the ones that most people would think of, mm -hmm. where it's like there's a crazy person in a sitcom. Right. Uh, maybe killing people. That's the thing about this week is like these may not have confirmed kills, but no one's really sure. No, because there's a lot of evidence. Tons of, a lot of smoke is yeah. their fire. Right. And because a lot of it is circumstantial. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like we can't put Dennis at the scene of a crime. Right. And yet why does he have, those, have all those tools in a secret compartment in his car? Exactly. Oh, there's a lot to get into. A yeah. lot of evidence swirling around a, a number of suspects. Yes. I would like to hear about yours first because oh. Will intimated to me that he has a theory I do. about the Scranton Strangler that I'm very curious about. I have a theory and an outlandish idea that I just think yes. would be kind of cool. So we'll get into all that in just a second after this commercial break. Okay. The Scranton Strangler, yeah. Kristen. I want to start thusly. Mm -hmm. This is from The Office, right. which I think is one of the most... Beloved shows of all time. What is your, what is your, in 2024, how do you feel about The Office? What are your feelings about The Office? I still love The Office. I haven't watched it in full in a really long time. Um, I watch clips as they are served to me on the YouTube algorithm. Oh, okay. Um, but yeah, I haven't watched it all together in a while. But like, it's funny as hell. It, At least to begin with. I fell off during latter yeah. seasons. Mm -hmm. Like, I think that there was a decline when Steve Carell left as many people do um i'm sure that there were peaks and valleys after that robert california i yes robert california peak. i think that i think robert california played by oh god i always forget this man's name i want to say stanley tucci and i know that's not who he is i want to say robert blake and that's not who he is <laughs> no but there are some robert blake characteristics in this man i know <laughs> james spader james spader thank god mm -hmm. uh ultron himself james spader <laughs> Uh, I think is an underrated, although now he's getting his his uh, just desserts, I feel. Is he? I think that, I think I think enough people have championed the Robert California character who took over really? from Michael Scott. I think enough people have been like, he's actually funny. Do you just think that because you came to my house and we turned on YouTube to watch Octonauts for your daughter Zoe and the last thing that I had watched was The Lizard King? <laughs> <laughs> I've got that quote in here. Okay, good. Um, no, I think, I yeah. think people like Robert California mm -hmm. enough. Mm -hmm. um, but then, obviously, they tried to make Ed Helms be the new Michael Scott, and that never really took off. I stopped watching it at a certain point, and yeah. then I came back and watched the series finale. It does get crazy. It, it mm -hmm. is kind of crazy that you're watching the same show. Yeah. I always think what about, do you think about it in the year 2024? Yeah, I, I really like it. Mm -hmm. I think it's really, really funny, but it's like, it's just not a, sh it's like the last sitcom or something. Oh, yeah. I know. I know that, like... You know, I don't know. The... Abbott Elementary is huge right now. People Oh, even right now? It. Is oh, it still going on? Huge. It's kind of new. I think it's only in its second season or something. Really? Yeah. Wow. I, and yeah, The Good I, Place, I know, over, but, you know. Over, but even that, The Good Place, great example. I feel like The Good Place, and I could be completely wrong, but The Good Place I view as like the modern-ish sitcom where it's like, I don't know, 10 episode seasons? Yeah. I don't think they did like the 22, 24 episode seasons. I don't know if anything does anymore. And that's what I mean about The Office. Yeah. I think The Office may have been with, and I'm sure there are plenty of exceptions. Again, I feel like maybe the Goldbergs, perhaps, oh, young, perhaps young Sheldon. I'm not sure. Could very well be. And I know Big Bang Theory was a big deal. Yes. But like... I feel like The Office was the last like must see TV. Everybody agreed that this is really, really good. And everything else has been relatively polarizing or fallen into this obscurity bracket because there's so much television to watch. Yeah. But like The Office, everybody seemed on board for 22 episode seasons, old fashioned structure for producing a show, even mm -hmm. though it was that mockumentary style. Right. I, I, I feel I think like you're probably right. They don't make them like that anymore. Yeah. 
And uh, weirdly, I feel like it is uh, also a good example of why you shouldn't make television like that anymore, mm -hmm. specifically with those last few seasons. Maybe because it's, it's not like, sustainable. Or maybe you can make television like that, but kind of know when to, when to fold them. Yeah, no one. Said. Yeah, no one to fold him. I think that's true, because yeah, after after Steve Carell mm -hmm. left, uh, it, it really like, that could be. I like Robert good, California fine. Yeah, but that's that's a good natural stopping point. Yeah, it's also like he's a good example of like a, a few yeah. shows did this where it's like Zach Braff left Scrubs, uh -huh. and then they tried to keep going with Scrubs for a while and it didn't work. Right, and Zach Braff's. Like, ostensibly, people seem to leave their sitcoms to become movie stars. Yeah. Topher Grace did it with that 70s show. Yep. And that show continued on for a couple years without him. Mm -hmm. His movie career didn't really go anywhere. Yeah. And the show suffered because he left. True. Weirdly, I think Talk Steve Carell... Talk about come up though. Topher Grace. Yeah? Yeah, because after everything has come out about Danny Masterson, like... There have been resurfaced interviews where he is kind of like alluded to like not loving the vibe on set. Is that right? And like the I mean, I I don't really wow. know. I'm completely okay. paraphrasing, but like the guys in a very couched way, how rephrase it, like them basically being dicks or whatever. And like him not really playing ball. Oh, that's interesting. Or even accounts from on set if he didn't say it. And people used to be kind of like, oh, because he's like a nerd or Topher whatever. Is better. Topher thinks he's better than everyone. But yes. he was like, no, I don't I don't want to be. Yeah. Like with you guys who suck. Yeah. yeah. I don't want to be on Punked and wear a trucker hat. <laughs> right. And be friends with Danny Masterson. Yeah. He didn't have to do an apology tour where he wears his dirty white Gruyere shirt <laughs> and pretend that he's, you know. You're talking about Gruyere. It's the famous people. Again, I. I know. They love Gruyere. I suspect that there's yet a cheese that we'll never meet because we aren't millionaires. Oh, one million Some percent. secret cheese that only the richest get access to. Yeah, it's to. probably like 200 years old and it's probably disgusting. Probably. Yeah, you wouldn't want it anyway. No. So anyway. I like The Office fine. Yeah. I think that it is. it has a, a, a tampered legacy because those last few years are fine, but unnecessary. But you know what? Unnecessary. I forget about that. Like, when I when you first asked me, and I was like, oh, yeah, it's great. Like, I forgot that those years existed. Yeah, you that's know? fair. I, I think most people probably do. Mm -hmm. um, but so I am here to talk to you uh, about what I think is, I, I wish, okay. Yeah, I don't really uh, remember this. The Scranton so, Strangler. Yeah. So this, the, the Scranton Strangler, it's so much fun, especially because I brought up at the end of last week's episode, this Tim Heidecker mm -hmm. series called On Cinema at the Cinema. Which I have since gotten obsessed with. Yeah. So thank you. We've discovered, by the way, what I think is the optimal starting point. Yes. Season Se seven. Yeah. Launch into season seven of On Cinema at the Cinema. And then if you want to, you can skip season eight, which I did, but I'm going to end up going back to. And go to season nine, because that really plants a lot of seeds for the trial of Tim Heidecker, which yes. I am almost done with now. Yes. Tim Heidecker goes on trial, and there's literally a five-hour long court session. It's incredible. It's great. But um, I think that uh, the Scranton Strangler, hidden within the story of The Office, now that I'm obsessed with On Cinema again, it feels like that would, should be building to something, building to some reveal of the Scranton Strangler yeah. or something that there's this... Because we're watching The Office and we get to know all of the characters that work in, in Dunder Mifflin's, you know, Scranton office mm -hmm. in Pennsylvania. And it's a, a, a mockumentary. So in the world of The Office, PBS is doing a documentary about these people working together and the ins and outs, the minutia of their lives. Yeah. And uh, because it's, you know, supposedly real and these are real people, there's a moment where there's a serial killer <laughs> that has not been found. And the characters in the show become fascinated by the ongoing drama surrounding the Scranton Strangler. What season is this? It started in season six. Okay. Specifically season six, episode 18. It has the greatest. So is this post Michael Scott? No, it's just before he leaves. Okay. By like maybe a couple of years. Mm -hmm. But it it's, it's, it's funny because in my brain, I know that people who like The Office have all of these theories about like, well, the Scranton Strangler uh, is caught yeah. and put in jail on the show. Mm -hmm. Yet, fans of The Office continue to theorize that the man in jail is not the real Scranton Strangler. Right. And the real Scranton Strangler is one of the people in The Office, one of the main characters of the show. Yeah. And there are tons of theories swirling around, particularly about one individual mm -hmm. who I will get to. But... Going back to it, because I, it's such a big thing 
that people like to talk about the Scranton Strangler and theorize. It's funny that like, oh, obviously when you actually look at it, it's just a joke. Yeah. Because it's a comedy show. Sure. So here's how it started. Okay. Because it's the Scranton Strangler overarching story on The Office is almost just a series of like maybe three pretty perfect individual jokes. Okay. Okay. <laughs> that people have then extrapolated a ton of stuff from. Yeah. So here's the first joke. Here's the introduction of the Scranton Strangler. Um, uh, Pam and Jim, whose like relationship is at the center of the office, really. Their will they won't they tension, Kristen. Mm-hmm. In season six, episode 18, Pam is giving birth. And uh, Andy Bernard, played by Ed Helms, um, is frustrated. <laughs> he shows up at the hospital. You know what? I think I didn't see this stuff. I started kind of dropping off. Like, Did you? You started fading out? Yeah. I, like, once, I don't think I even saw their babies and stuff. Once Pam and Jim got together, I think a lot of people were like, that was like the thing, was mm-hmm. like seeing them like glance at each other and stuff. It should also, it's also worth pointing out that the, the American show The Office is based on the UK show The yeah. Office from Stephen Merchant and Ricky Gervais, which itself only had six episode seasons. Right. And all told, I feel like they're tops. What would that be? Maybe like 25 episodes yeah. all told? Yeah. Um, and yet we got like a decade of it over here. So they tried to make the Pam and Jim will they, won't they last. Right. Eventually they got married. And yeah, here they have a, a kid. And um, Pam was in labor so long that uh, uh, she would have delivered her child on the first day of spring. Uh-huh. But she delivered her the next day. So Andy Bernard... Shows up at the hospital frustrated because he had gotten a newspaper framed for the day that the child was born. (laughs) And the headline was, spring has sprung. And he said, but I have to change it now because she wasn't born yesterday. She was born today. And so he slaps the new today newspaper onto the frame, which says, Scranton Strangler strikes again. (laughs) That's a really good joke. (laughs) Which is a perfect joke. Yeah. (laughs) That could have just been it. Yeah, totally. That's how we're introduced to the concept (laughs) Of the Scranton Strangler. Now, I will say, uh, they do continually mention the Strangler. Yeah. For the remainder of season six, the Strangler is repeatedly mentioned, mostly by Dwight, Rain Wilson's character, who is the guy that, like, you know, insists that he's good at karate and has a bunch of weapons hidden around the office just in case (laughs) he needs to defend everybody. So he talks about how best to defend yourself from a strangler. (laughs) It's like you put your hand at your throat with your fingers pointing outward. And so he constantly talks about like how he wants to be the one to catch the strangler. Right. Because, yeah, he can take him down. Because there's a strangler out there. What's the name? The Smog Strangler. The Smog from from Seinfeld. Seinfeld. We did a whole episode about Seinfeld horror. Yes. References and stuff. It's absolutely not fantastic to toot our own horn go find it in horn. our feed so in the first half of season seven the next big important uh bit of strangler scranton strangler lore mm-hmm. drops Kristen. <laughs> uh, the scranton strangler is caught oh there's a whole moment in an episode where uh the police are chasing the scranton strangler there's a, a speed chase. It's like the O.J. Simpson, yeah. you know, white Bronco police chase. And all the characters from the office are crowded around a desk. Mm-hmm. H.R. Representative Toby Flenderson's desk, specifically, watching footage of the police chase as the Scranton Strangler is speeding down the road in a green, like a like a forest green sedan. Uh-huh. And then they realize, wait a minute, he's driving down the main street just outside our office. Yeah. So all the characters run to the windows and they're able to see the Scranton Strangler speed past the office with all of these police cars behind it. How exciting. Yeah, it's it's totally exciting. And for the purposes of our documentary world, oh my God, we were here yeah. when the Scranton Strangler was being apprehended. So they're all there. Michael, Dwight, Jim, everyone sitting around Toby's desk. Um, after the Scranton Strangler is caught, the office remains hooked to to all the developing information about like the trial and everything. Yeah, how could you not be? But also, very uh, important to point out, again, HR Representative Toby Flenderson mm-hmm. ends up being on the jury ah. for the Scranton Strangler case. And I noticed something here. Where it had been in between big moments of Scranton Strangler lore dumps, mm-hmm. it was mostly Dwight 
focusing on the Scranton Strangler at large. Yeah. There's like a Halloween episode where he dresses up like the Strangler. Uh-huh. And he's got like a hat with an S on it. Poor taste. Poor, the worst taste <laughs> imaginable. And because um, uh, he's all about like, well, he's out there. Yeah. Who Who is he? Can we stop him? Whatever. Right. But once the Strangler is locked up, suddenly all of the Scranton Strangler discussion is generated by HR representative Toby Flenderson. Interesting. Because now he's on the jury and he's very interested in discussing what is developing in the case. I just want to point something out. So we have a monitor behind us um, for the video version of the show, which is at youtube.com slash gttupod. And Will, when he says the name Toby, is pointing at it. And he's tracing Toby's lips with his finger every time he does it. <laughs> just like, like he's not just pointing at him. He's just gingerly tracing his lips that's I, all i just realized that i had an opportunity to really make <laughs> now contact. he's stroking his nose all yeah. right go back to your yeah thank you <laughs> so uh the strangler is locked up now mm-hmm. chrissy the, the strangler is found uh uh guilty yeah okay so uh george howard scub okay <laughs> that's a great name is the scranton strangler locked up but does that mean that the story is over no Toby, despite having been on the jury, develops a theory that perhaps they put away an innocent man. Ah. All right. Now, what I'm describing to you is playing out over the course of years of the show now, uh-huh. because now throughout seasons eight and this nine, fun. Toby makes occasional reference to the Strangler, specifically how he feels he was pressured into agreeing with a guilty verdict. <laughs> Finally, in season nine, Toby decides that he is going to tell the story himself. He's going to get to the bottom of it himself. Oh. So he ends up driving to the prison mm-hmm. to meet with George Howard Scubb face to face and finally determine whether or not this man is the Scranton Strangler. Oh my God. And he ends up getting strangled. <laughs> there's, there's basically there's basically like a smash cut to him in the passenger seat of a car wearing a neck brace with like bruises on his face. <laughs> And that is the the third and final, like, pretty perfect situation with the Scranton Strangler. That's really funny. <laughs> He's set up with the newspaper, right? Yeah. Spring has sprung? No, Scranton Strangler strikes again, okay? <laughs> he lurks in the background with Dwight talking about how to defeat him. Then you get your second big moment. Everyone's crowded around the desk during the chase. You see him drive past the office. Right. Then it's all about Toby. Maybe he's innocent. And you conclude the joke with the great punchline of, I believe he's innocent. Oh, wait, I got strangled. Yeah, he's going to go have like a making a murderer sort of moment with yes. him. And it seems like it's probably him. He got strangled. He loves to strangle. He got strangled by the Scranton Strangler. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. The joke has landed. Right. George Howard Scubb is the Scranton Strangler. Or is he? Or is he? Because uh, theories have persisted to this very day. The office has been off TV. For years. Yeah. Years. I mean, there have been uh, endless rumors every year or so about some reboot of it. Yep. But uh, here are the some of the big suspects. I'll, I'll walk you through this. Mm-hmm. Obviously, let's discuss George Howard Scubb. Yes. The man who was put away in jail as the Scranton Strangler. As we last left him, he st- strangled HR Representative <laughs> Toby Flenderson, who had insisted that the man was innocent. It certainly oh doesn't do George Howard Scubb any favors. No. But I will say this. The office, though silly, sure. purports to be part of our real world. Right. How many people are put away for crimes that they did not commit? A bajillion. Is it outside, you know, uh, uh, any possibility that the same happened to poor George Howard Scubb? No, it's not outside the possible. I will say the fact that he strangled Toby points but, to but no it's not outside the possibility table that for now because we'll yes. get to another potential motive for the strangling now let's focus on ah. let's focus on dwight Schrute. okay now dwight Schrute, i already mentioned <laughs> he's very strangled he's, <laughs> he seems like he's strangler forward actually uh <laughs> i have a quote I, I took a quote down from each suspect <laughs> All right. Uh, here's a quote from Dwight Schrute. This is early on as he's talking about who could be the, the Scranton Strangler. He said, to my chickens, I'm the Scranton Strangler. <laughs> so Dwight Dwight is on the record as having said that he has strangled chickens to death. <laughs> okay. <laughs> is it too far <laughs> to assume he could do the same <laughs> to a man? <laughs> All right. No, it's not. Now, I wrote down, <laughs> to my chickens, I'm the Scranton Strangler. Dwight is so... So funny. It is very funny. I totally agree. Now, <laughs> oh 
I wrote, obviously Dwight is weird. Oh, God. Uh, many, now some of the theories that are just generally on the internet, mm-hmm. many point to his obsession with the police as yeah. being a sign that he could be the Grand Strangler. And we okay. and this bears out in uh, uh, the rhythms of, of true crime, Kristen. Yeah. Um, because uh, certainly Ed Kemper... Um, <laughs> <laughs> Ed Kemper, uh, who was like called like the sorority killer or something, I don't know. He he remained. Cl- he tried to stay close to the police to get a sense of what their evidence was to see if they were closing in on him. So could Dwight? Could Dwight, oh my God. Could, could Dwight be doing the same thing, oh just God. trying to get a sense of what's going on in the investigation, being like a deputy sheriff or whatever? Yeah, exactly. Yes. Um, oh my God. And I also noted once again his extensive collection of weaponry. <laughs> There's like a moment in the office where they're trying to clear out his stuff, and he's got like a bow and arrow hidden, <laughs> hidden in the drop ceiling above his desk. Kristen's dying. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Okay. <laughs> I also I also thought that it was again Oh my god, it's so funny. <laughs> crying. Oh my god. I thought it was again worth mentioning that uh, I, I I just think it's strange, I don't know what to make of it, that Dwight <laughs> Dwight is <laughs> Dwight, be a professional. <laughs> Dwight, Dwight is our inroad to Scranton lore. To strangler lore. <laughs> strangler lore up until the strangler's caught and then all of a sudden it becomes about toby why does dwight suddenly lose interest does he have to go quiet because publicly the strangler has been apprehended yeah right so just some nuggets to think about for dwight let's leap to um somebody that we've already done a lot of discussing about robert california Mm -hmm. now I i will admit right off the bat that a huge mark against robert california being this grand strangler is that he does not join the show for several years after the strangler was first mentioned wow. but does that not mean that he couldn't could have been could out have been there wrapping his hands around some poor yeah. victim's throat <laughs> before we met him yeah what he else is the lizard king what yes so Kristen already mentioned the lizard king yeah here's what we discover about robert california <laughs> So James funny. Spader's character, Robert California, is said to be like an affluent businessman. He's got um, unusual methodologies <laughs> for how he works, um, but he constantly talks about like like weird sensuality and yeah. <laughs> indulgence. And- yeah, like he he calls them for like a like a men's business meeting or something. It's in like a like a bathhouse, and he's yeah. naked, and he's he's like telling them to get naked because it shows like strength or something <laughs> yes. it's, 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 it's all weird it's insane his name is robert california uh which is a funny name yeah. uh and at a certain point uh ed helms's character uh tries to tries to play hardball mm-hmm. over the phone with robert california now i'm going to use a a a, a word that many might find sensitive yes here okay it's our one During per episode yes. yes so <clears throat> so robert california feels incensed <laughs> that Ed Helms is trying to play hardball with him uh, over the phone. And here is what Robert California says, which many point to a sign he could be this Grand Strangler. Here we yeah, go. this is quite unhinged. He interrupts Ed Helms and says, Well, I will not be blackmailed by some ineffectual, privileged, effete, soft penis debutante. You want to start a street fight with me, bring it on. But you're going to be surprised by how ugly it gets. You don't even know my real name. I'm the fucking Lizard King. <laughs> Awesome. And they cut to Ed Helms like in shock. Yeah, <laughs> it's like he doesn't know what he's gotten himself into on the other end of the phone. He doesn't know what to make of this. It's but awesome. It's like a 13 second clip on YouTube that I've watched like a hundred times. It's outstanding. Yeah. But now <clears throat> we can certainly break this down. Okay. Right. I, and I think uh, understandably the most important lines come toward the end. Mm-hmm. Um, you want to start a street fight with me, bring it on. You're going to be surprised by how ugly it gets. Yeah, what does that mean? What does that mean? What is this man capable of? Yeah. You don't even know my real name. <laughs> now, that could just be to cue up the next thing. I'm the fudging lizard king. Or is his real name the Scranton Strangler? Oh, his legal name. Yeah. <laughs> Later, when Robert California exits the series... He, in front of everybody, introduces himself to someone as Bob Kazamakis. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and 
and they all sort of look at each other like, what? That's, That's right. His name's yeah. not Robert California? Mm -hmm. So he, he is not going under real names all the time. Right. He does change his name. So what... I'm the Lizard King. Now that sounds like the King in Yellow from True Detective yes, or something. Yes, you know, like, it does. This yeah. sounds like some like <laughs> totally whacked out, losing reality sicko. Absolutely, like the Zodiac Killer talking about how his slave, his victims will become slaves in the in afterlife. The afterlife. <laughs> I imagine he's part of some sort of underground that we don't understand. Yeah, he's in some sort of a, like an Illuminati situation. <laughs> yeah. Well, actually, now that you bring that up, there is this whole theory of Jack the Ripper mm -hmm. and the Ripper's victims in foggy old London town. Yeah. Was were those killings in some way sanctioned by the monarchy? So you oh. could look at the crimes of the Scranton Strangler and apply a similar methodology to that. Was the elite business ruling class in some way endorsing these stranglings taking place on the streets of Scranton? Scranton. <laughs> I got so close to it, like I really had a good I know you really did. I was on a roll with all yeah, those yeah, big yeah. words logical. for a minute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyway, so people think it might be Robert California. But let's <laughs> let's move on to our next sus suspect uh Creed Bratton. I mean, how could you not? Creed suspect? Bratton is the strangest man in the office. He's fantastic. Um, uh, I really only have one. I mean, I mean, there are multiple times of this that this character Creed yeah. will he references. <laughs> he alludes at one. He's a deviant. <laughs> he's a he's a complete deviant. <laughs> he talks about how he doesn't know what his job is. He doesn't know what his title is. Yeah. He doesn't know what he's doing there. He's just kind of floating by. But he's also said crazy things like he's alluded multiple times to committing many crimes. Yes. And he even said on camera um, that he stole the identity of a dead man. That man's name? Creed Bratton. Yeah. <laughs> so he's not Creed Bratton. He is... Someone. He already assumes someone's identity and he's been on the show under that assumed identity this whole time. Yeah. He ends up arrested in the final episodes of The Office for, for unknown crimes. It makes sense. By unknown, I mean, I don't remember. <laughs> Um, I remember one time Phyllis was upset because somebody flashed her on the way into the office and he says, what is wrong with hanging a little brain? <laughs> <laughs> the man is out of his mind. Yes. But here's the big piece of evidence for him. He shows up to the office Halloween party. Everybody's wearing costumes and he's got like blood splattered on his shirt and a little bit on his face. Uh -huh. And uh, someone goes, that's a great Halloween costume. And they cut to his little talking head, his little interview, private space in a room alone with the documentary crew. And he's just thinking out loud. He goes, it's Halloween. Yeah. <laughs> that is really, really good timing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's someone's blood. <laughs> Something happened. I remember that was that. real blood on him. Yeah. And it's never addressed again. Nope. <laughs> All right. Here's the big one. The big one. We've already talked about him a multitude of times. I've been yeah. rubbing his lips on our screen. <laughs> HR representative Toby Flenderson. Mm -hmm. I'm very interested. Toby occupies this space on the office as like the most hated one. Mm -hmm. uh, Michael Scott despises Toby. Um, uh, he, <laughs> he insults He's him. He's just like a quiet little man. Yes. Here's the quote that I have from Toby. I'll show you. There are multiple times throughout the show that Toby mutters something under his breath that's very aggressive. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. Like he says like things about getting revenge and stuff like that <laughs> periodically. Yeah. Now, here's where we need to flash back to some of the Scranton Strangler lore that I dumped on you early on. Yeah. The Scranton Strangler was part of that police chase, mm -hmm. right? The one that drove past the office on that main road. Right. Now, I described everybody sitting around Toby Flenderson's desk. I never said that Toby was present. <gasps> William! He's not present, in fact. Tricky, tricky. I know. All the other characters are, for some reason, sitting around specifically Toby's desk as the Scranton Strangler is being chased by police. This is not a connection that I've made. This is out there. Everybody's talked about this before. Yeah. But it is certainly worth noting that Toby's not present while the Scranton Strangler is being chased. There's a very particularly odd moment in retrospect. Mm -hmm. At a certain point while everyone's watching the police chase, the phone rings. Toby's yeah. desk phone rings. And Kelly, Mindy Kaling's character, just picks up the phone and puts it down. And the joke is, this is more important than business. Yeah. Somebody's calling for work reasons. She just hangs up the phone. Who cares? So could Toby have been working with the guy who's in prison? There you go. See, this is where people start thinking. Yeah. Now, even even Pam and Aaron mm -hmm. are around watching this on the camera, meaning the receptionist is not at their desk. Right. So whoever called couldn't have been rerouted by reception. Right. They directly called Toby's line. Mm -hmm. Now, Michael Scott has pointed out that Toby... Uh, has had a divorce. Mm -hmm. And so Michael says famously that Toby's not even a part of his own family. Yeah. So who's calling Toby? Right. Directly during this, 
you know, high intensity, high emotion moment. Uh-huh. So people have posited that perhaps it is like George Howard Scubb. Right. Trying to, because it seems like it's got to be George Howard Scubb driving that car. Yeah. Because he eventually is caught. Right. But it, it just, it raises questions more than anything else. Uh-huh. Something else that raises questions about this police chase is that I mentioned the police chase involving a green sedan. Does Toby drive a green sedan? Keen-eyed office fans <laughs> have noted that in the uh, the premiere episode of season six, this is before the Grand Strangler was even mentioned, mm-hmm. Michael Scott is doing parkour in the... I do remember that. In the parking lot, and the green sedan is parked just outside the office. Ooh! So the Scran Strangler's car, or at least the car he was apprehended in, uh-huh. might belong to somebody who works at Dunder Mifflin. Ooh la la! You know, or production had these a certain number of cars of and just course, reused one, but that yeah, doesn't yeah, yeah. seem likely to me. Nah. I think the Scran. I think they planned out all this Strangler <laughs> lore from the beginning. They had to have. Um, okay. So, I mentioned that George Howard Scubb strangling Toby could have another potential motive. Here's what the fans have posited. Even confronting George Howard Scubb can be explained away as Toby showing up to actually confess to Mm -hmm. Scubb, I am the Scranton Strangler, Mm. only for Scubb to leap across the table, wrap his meaty paws around Toby's little neck and squeeze. Sure. (laughs) Now, it's the leading fan theory, Chris, and I have to say, it is fairly compelling. Again, what we said at the start of the episode, so much smoke. Is there fire? Right. I don't know. I don't think there's enough to really act on. Well, I mean, if does that theory, like, connect with the theory that Scub was calling Toby? Or is I know, because that would imply some element of being in cahoots. They would have to be in cahoots if he's calling. It him. sounds like a cahoot yeah. situation. Now, there are serial, there are times that serial killers are not lone wolf mad dogs. Right. Sometimes they do team up with each other. Mm-hmm. Um, and maybe this could be such a case. So, I mean, maybe, Billy Loomis and Stu Mocker, hello. Anybody? Um, so, maybe the people who think that Toby went to visit him in prison and confessed and he strangled him are people who don't believe that the phone call right. was Scub. Right, you know right. I mean? Yes, yes, but yes, yes. He could have gone to visit him and, you know, I don't know, make sure he's going to keep his trap shut or something. Yeah, you're right. And then Scub Scrant. That's, that's a that's a great point. I think there's plenty of room to maneuver and, and I think theorize. So. But I, this is where I'm going to leave you with, I think, my favorite of the suspects. Yeah. Uh, he's introduced, um, strangely, he's introduced three episodes before the Scrant Strangler is ever mentioned. That is Suspicious. Mm hmm. His name is Gabe. Okay. Okay. Yeah. You know who Gabe is? Yes, I do. I wish I had the performer's name because he's so funny. Yeah, that guy is really funny. He's like one of the greatest improvisers mm-hmm. on that show. But um, Gabe comes in as the assistant to uh, w- is it Misery. Any- What's her name? Huh? Who played Misery in Misery. Oh, Kathy Bates. Kathy Bates' character has yeah. an assistant and it's Gabe. And he's this tall, lanky guy. They constantly talk about this guy as being... A gangly skeleton, and uh-huh. <laughs> like weak and stuff. Like the way that they talk about Jonah in Veep. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So uh, Gabe strangely shows up three episodes before the Strangler Strikes Again newspaper mm. headline. Maybe the Strangler struck right. the second that he arrived in town. Yeah. He's striking again on the day of uh, Pam's daughter's birth. Now, a lot of people have pointed to uh, a particular type of evidence for Gabe. His character, one of his defining characteristics is that he loves horror movies. Oh. Okay. How interesting. Mm -hmm. But I say to you, Kristen, as Billy Loomis taught us, (laughs) movies don't create psychos. (laughs) Movies make psychos more creative. So, I mean, maybe he had picked up some tips. Yeah, actually, liking horror still might not be good. Right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> still doesn't make a case for him not being the strangler. Exactly. Yeah. He's uh, 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 he's dating Aaron, yep. the receptionist, and uh, they play some competitive game, and whoever wins gets to pick a movie, uh-huh. and he always wins and always picks horrifically violent movies that she can barely endure. <laughs> All right. Uh, he ends up trying to make horror movies of his own. Uh, which sometimes involve filming people without them knowing about it. Oh, that's not good. Also, when Aaron dumps him, he turns into almost a genuine stalker. He, like, follows her into the bathroom and says he won't leave her alone. Ugh. Yep. But then there's this line. Describing himself, he says, I don't have the lung capacity to blow a whistle. 
he's talking about becoming a gym teacher or something. <laughs> so he says that he, he lacks the lung capacity <laughs> to blow a whistle. Now, I've brought up that he's described as being physically frail, mm -hmm. <laughs> weak and skeleton-like, and yeah. doesn't have the lung capacity to blow a whistle. Why then do I think that he could be the Scranton Strangler, Kristen? Does he do something that demonstrates strength and he just wants everybody to think that he's weak? Or is the Strangler not that strong? Oh. Enter the metadata. Paul Lieberstein. Paul Lieberstein, That's what to sorry, <laughs> who plays Toby Flunderson yeah. from HR, was on a podcast. He was on the Box Angelus podcast, I mm -hmm. think, where he gave some pretty surprising information about the Strand Strangler that changes everything we thought we knew. Oh, my God. He says this. There's a quote from Paul Lieberstein. The one thing the Strangler did was he strangled people but didn't kill them. Oh. He left what? them once they'd been strangled and passed out. I'm not sure we ever got around to saying that, but that was always our thing. The Scranton Strangler didn't strangle you to death. Oh. So once again, I say Gabe showed up three episodes before the Scranton Strangler is mentioned. He lacks the strength to blow a whistle. That is very compelling. He cannot strangle you to death. He strangles you to <laughs> as far as he can possibly get and then runs away. That creates a pretty compelling case for Gabe. But does it not also? That's why I like Gabe as the yeah, theory. I like Gabe for this. I like Gabe for this crime. Yeah. But again, I have to then go all the way back to the man in jail, George mm. Howard Scubb. Right. Who, when faced with Toby, strangled, but didn't kill. That's true. That's true. So perhaps... The simplest answer is often the right one. <laughs> That's right. As when you're when you hear hooves, think horses, not zebras. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And I always do. Me too. I'm always thinking about horses. <laughs> now I'll, I'll leave you with this about the Scranton Strangler because here's where I just get into my own outlandish. Like I think this would be kind of cool. Yeah. But again, I think this might be tainted with my present obsession with on cinema. Sure. So people have constantly been talking about like, can we get a reboot of The Office? Mm -hmm. They're going to reboot The Office. Yeah. And it's like, well, to what effect? Because so many of those characters, like, they don't work in The Office anymore. Michael Scott's right. been gone for years. It's not going to be the show that it was yeah. that people think of it as, as being. Mm -hmm. I At best, I was always like, you know what? Do one more episode and just have Michael Scott be the boss and just don't even mention just it. Just a clean reset. Just because just, we're just we doing want. it as a fun one-off. Who cares? Make it a what if. Yeah. But now with this on cinema Tim Heidecker experiment thing where it's this on going thing that like it was a movie review show. No, now he committed a crime and we've got a five hour long court trial. Yeah. I, let me say the following. Ah. I think that there could have been room. The premise of The Office always went on. It was a little long in the tooth by the end. Mm -hmm. PBS is doing a documentary about people in an office yeah. for a decade. Right. Before they released yeah, it. Yeah, this is quite. Well, there was something called, man, I don't remember. It was called, I think it was called like Five Up and then it was 25 yes. Up or whatever. You know what I mean? It was, yes. It was following kids and then checking in with them when they were adults and on and on and on in life well, but is, it was check-ins it was check-ins yeah. so they would they would like do it and then release something right and then record a little more and then release another thing this the show posits that pbs yeah. did the documentary recorded yeah I know. for 10 years and then cut it into i don't know a 90 yeah, minute documentary become? what was this yeah i don't know so um there's I, about a boy by richard Link leader. Yeah, uh-huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. A boy's Maybe life. It's, it's, a, it's a boy's life. You're boys' right. life magazine or something? Probably that. Highlights? Yeah. Goofus and Gallant? I think it's Goofus and Gallant. So, um, and Kevin Smith did this with Clerks, too. He cited actually the 10 up, 20 up, 35 oh, up, whatever, uh -huh. where he's like, every 10 years we check in with Dante and Randall oh, yeah, yeah, from yeah, Clerks, yeah. which is a cool idea. Yeah, it is a cool idea. Can't do it anymore. No. Uh, <clears throat> spoiler <laughs> alert. Uh, anyway, uh, so... Uh, it was always going to be a tricky proposition to ever say, let's do more of The Office. Right. So technically, Michael Scott lives in like Colorado and has kids. And I, I don't, I, I think Pam and Jim are there. I do think that they ended up staying, but are they still there? In Colorado? No, in, in, oh. in Scranton, Pennsylvania. Oh. Or I think she actually ends up saying, let's move to Philly and Jim get into your sports job thing. That was like an arc with them oh, towards okay. the end. Like, I, what do you do? It's not going to be the same as it was. Right. So I posit the following. Mm -hmm. Don't even try to make it the same as it was. Yeah. Do a fictional true crime documentary about the Scranton Strangler. Ah. 
and through discussing the Scranton Strangler, you can bring back in certain characters. Fun. You can bring back in Rain Wilson, who yeah. Dwight is now, let's say he continues to consult with the police. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. so he's part of the documentary. And because Dwight's part of the documentary, they film in the office where he's got a board of information or something like that. So you get to see some of your office characters as yeah. part of this. Toby can be part of it then. You can contrive ways to bring them back. That's a great idea. Again, I will say that this is also what I'm positing, not anything that anybody wants who's a fan of the show. But it would be a way to I would keep like that. to keep the methodology of this world alive. Mm-hmm. The office is delivered through documentary footage. Yeah. And true crime, I think true crime has quieted since it's like huge yep. peak a few years ago. But people still like it. People still like it fine. It might yeah. it's probably too late now. What they should have done at the time, I think it would have been challenging and weird. Yeah. Do a a little 90 minute fun check-in thing. Yeah. And uh, yeah, do, yeah, do I a, think that's a cool idea. True crime documentary in the world of The Office about the Scranton Strangler, which people remain curious about to this day. Clearly, Cur- yeah, clearly, yeah, it's still going on, Kristen, yeah. and it seems like it won't stop. And without any concrete information, mm-hmm. can it ever stop? That's true. If they want to put a stop to this, then they have to. So, Paul Lieberstein, you've got three days <laughs> <laughs> to, to announce it. That's right. Or it will never stop. Yeah. Oh, well. All right, so I'm going to tell you about Dennis Reynolds of It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, another potential killer. Yes. But first, we need to make sure you know about these two killers Mm -hmm. who are killing it in the world of scary content. They should call us the killers of the kings of comedy. That's a great idea. The killer kings of comedy. Anybody has used that before. Um, So we have a Patreon. It is patreon.com slash GTTU pod, where we have a whole second podcast that comes out weekly, just like this one does. It's called the Netherworld Dispatch. It comes out every Monday. And if you join us on our demon tier at patreon.com slash GTTU pod, you get every single one of those. And then we have other tiers that you can get the episodes twice a month or once a month and you can just pick whichever one speaks to you we even have a one dollar a month tier where you can get access to our discord Mm -hmm. so go check it out see what works for you and uh, we would love to have you and thank you so much to everybody who already joins us over there yes our most recent episode of the netherworld dispatch is episode 151 batman arkham horror um, occasionally we talk about video games over there. I feel like a lot of people have a blind spot for video games. Mm-hmm. Understandably. Yeah. They can be really tricky to get into, get into it's expensive a high to get into. Barrier of entry. Yes. That's why periodically we find something that is, I think, worth bringing to the attention of everyone. And in this case, it's this Batman Arkham series that was like Batman plus horror elements. Yeah. And so the Scarecrow has these weird twisty turny segments where Batman is hallucinating people being dead. And like It was wild. So when we do these video game episodes, like Will is playing through. I'm not great at playing these kinds of video games. And we're just explaining what's happening on screen and the plot of it and everything to everybody who's listening. So With it's a video like, version if you want to see. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So it's really just like explaining the story to you if you've ever been curious about what happens in these things. Um, it's awesome. I love it because I'm interested and what goes on but i i don't play games like this so i love it yep and uh i've also got so go check that out patreon.com slash gttu pod find a tier that fits and Mm -hmm. and uh, have fun yeah um and i've also got a review for us uh from aqua lunast titled fun informative and addictive i remember exactly where i was and what i was doing the first time i listened to this podcast and since then it has become my go-to podcast whenever i'm listening to shows i'm not a horror fan and have never seen any of the Scream or Blair Witch movies. Sorry, Will and Kristen. They say. <laughs> Quite all right. That's a good example, too, where it's like, I yeah. feel like sometimes we talk about things that people don't actually want to engage in, but are curious about. Oh, yeah. Um, but I thoroughly enjoy listening to everything they have to say about those franchises and all the other wonderful myths, legends, and mysteries. Have gone through the entire catalog and have listened to a number of episodes more than once. Wish I could give it more than five stars. Aww. Thank you, Will and Kristen. Oh, that's nice. Thank you so much. I'm glad you like it. Thank you so much to everybody who leaves us reviews. It's so nice of you. Thank you for taking the time. I'm it's glad wonderful. you like the show. All right, so more of a sitcom uh, Mad Men yeah. after this commercial break. Okay, so 
Dennis from It's Always Sunny. Um, what is your relationship to Always Sunny in 2024? I think uh, not dissimilar from your view of like The Office. Mm -hmm. I I like it. I think it's great. I get served clips of it on YouTube <laughs> yeah. constantly, and I watch every single one that comes my way. Yeah. But I watched it early on and totally dropped off. Don't yeah. don't know what developed in it really much at all. After season, I'm going to see three or four. Very similar for me, honestly. Yeah, I watched it early on. Um, I, I have watched the recent seasons. Like, honestly, my husband Ryan has remembered too, so then I watch it. It's still funny as hell everything i've seen has been really funny or really creative I, like yeah. i saw they did like an episode that was all noir oriented like shot in black and white and charlie is a detective and yeah like it was like I, I really appreciate the creative swings that they take yeah it's it's super nutty yeah it's great um so i had honestly kind of forgotten about this because i do sort of dip and dip in and out of it and when we were conceiving of this of this episode will suggested dennis and i was like oh i'll take that one yeah, because yeah, yeah. i just hadn't thought of it's always sunny in a while i find i find all the characters of it's always sunny funny i particularly find dennis super funny i i, I don't know what it is there's something about a stereotypically douchey guy yeah. that really tickles me. And he is that, like blown up to 100. He's aggressive. Yeah. And self serious. He, yeah. It's just, it's, I don't know. It really, really gets me. He's, he's like, he kind of fancies himself a ladies' man. And he is, um, I would say that he is, he's handsome yeah. and he tries to lean on that, but the way he acts is so off-putting that it completely outweighs his physical handsomeness. Yeah. So he can't lean on it. He's very concerning. Yeah. It, he is extremely alarming. Problematic. Oh, beyond. What was the word that we decided we troublesome? Kind of, troublesome. Will and I, Will and I, I don't know, just in life, or whatever. We were talking about people and stuff, and we kept saying the word problematic, and we we're like, "What's another word for that?" We mm. like troublesome. I know we need to bury our troubles, everyone. Yeah. Um, I have decided. So, again, off camera, or whatever. I was talking to Will about my research, and I was like, "I feel like it's a little bit tricky to do Dennis because." on paper and explaining it to you without watching all of this, the dressing of watching the show, I feel like it's a little hard to explain and be like, oh, but it's actually really funny because it just sounds like, oh my God. It's so goddamn terrible, funny. But it's very, very funny. It's so goddamn funny. I mean, they know, they know damn know. well what they're doing. It's not as if. No, yeah. I know. But like me saying it to the audience, I was I like, I don't know if I'm going to be able to convey how like funny it is it just yeah. sounds like uh I know. <laughs> this is very bad what i've decided He's a bad man. <laughs> this just sounds like a bad guy yeah. um what i have decided to focus on partially because it kind of folds into a couple of different instances of scary stuff is what's known as the dentist system right um so just to in case nobody has watched the show before what it's always sunny is about is a group of friends made up of Charlie Mack, an older man named Frank, who is played by Dane DeVito, and his kids, Dee and Dennis, who we're focusing on. They are often socially inept slash inappropriate, um, but part of Dennis's thing is that, as I said, he's traditionally handsome and charming at first glance, but there is weirdness, to say the least, and potentially psychopathy brewing yes. below the surface. Yeah, like, is he a violent... Yeah. <laughs> is he is he a does he at least have a serial killer's mentality? Right. If he's not acting on it, it right. certainly seems like he has the impulse. Yes. Now is he squashing that? Right. Or has he acted on it before? Has That's he so far corked yeah, the, that the, bottle? That bottle, yeah. We're not sure. Here is something that gives you a taste of what he's working with. This yeah. is something that he calls the Dennis system. Yeah. Um, and in the episode that we are introduced to it, he's explaining his system to the gang in the bar that they own. Um, and he has like one of those giant sheets of paper that you use at like a business meeting or whatever to explain things. And pre PowerPoint, yeah. like having like a <laughs> like poster board. Right, yeah. right. That you like flip through the pages 
of and is just making everybody sit and watch him do this demonstration. <laughs> and he says that this is the way to a woman's heart. Yeah. And so he's using the acrostic method. Each letter of the name Dennis has a different uh, like step of the Dennis system associated with it. So D stands for demonstrate value. Um, and the example that he gives for this is that, so he has targeted, yeah. and I will use the word targeted on purpose um, because it's a very predatory thing. He has targeted a woman who is a pharmacist for okay. this, okay. this, de this dentist system demonstration. Uh, demonstration. So to go after this woman, he decides to fill a fake prescription for his grandmother because this demonstrates his value as a loving grandson. <laughs> so she's like, oh, what a good guy that he's yeah. filling this prescription for his grandmother. Now we move on to the second step. Engage physically. Now, this is more involved than you would think. Okay. And, but, but yes, Will just had a look of alarm in his eyes. You are... Don't touch me. Correct. Yeah. Don't <laughs> touch alarm. people. Don't touch strangers. No, it's not good. Luckily, this does involve... <laughs> Wait until marriage to <laughs> even <laughs> shake hands. <laughs> it luckily involves more consent than yeah. the fr phrase engaged physically would make it sound. Yeah. However, it does involve much manipulation and trickery. Okay. So... Um, this is, it's very, <laughs> there are many steps. So you ask her on a date, but you do this without actually having to go on a date, which Dennis says is a waste of time and money. <laughs> Dates? So, yeah. <laughs> okay. So you invite her to a great little place that you know of that doesn't take reservations, which makes it sound cool and exclusive. And then you get there and oops, it's closed, which you knew it would be because they're not open on Sundays. <laughs> so you say... <laughs> So you say, hey, let's get a pizza and go back to my place and watch a movie. And she's like, oh, okay. And you go back to your place. Oh, boy. Once you get back to your place, that's where Mac comes in. Your friend Mac, who's your roommate. Okay. Yes. So Mac is in the living room because he says he found a black widow spider in his room and he's scared. <laughs> <laughs> This happens all the time with them? Apparently. Yeah. Uh, Dennis says, can you go in your room? Uh, and Mac is explaining this part now. He chimes in. He's like, yes, so this is where I come in, in yeah. the Dennis system. And Dennis says that he would like some privacy so they can get to know each other more better. Uh, and Mac's like, no, I can't go back because I'm too scared. So Dennis says to the girl, well... I guess we could always eat the pizza in my room. Uh, wait, I guess we could always eat the pizza and watch the movie in my room. And then Dennis says, there is where the sexual Walt begins. Walt, excuse me. <laughs> sexual Walt. <laughs> Enter sexual Walt. <laughs> my other <Oops>. friend. <laughs> yeah. Hi, I'm sexual Walt. <laughs> And then, so they're shooting, they're showing all of this happening as it's as if it's like a reenactment of whatever happens. So it's like Dennis and the girl on the bed. And uh, she says, pizza's good. And he says, you're the one that's good. And then they start <laughs> making out. All right. And so now it's on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We move on to the first N. This is nurturing dependence. Oh, my God. <laughs> this is so crazy. He says that all women will now start to depend on you after you have sex. And uh, like as he's like doing this demonstration, all the guys are bumping fists and stuff. And D is just looking at them like they're total idiots. Like, yeah. what the hell is wrong with you? And uh, Dennis says, you want to nurture this dependence. So a way to do this is that he suggests doing something like having her car towed or slashing her <laughs> tires. So now she needs you for rides. <laughs> this is this now. See, this is where it starts to feel like Ted Bundy or yes, something. Yes, very sinister. Right? Very sinister, fabricating a situation that that that. <laughs> Puts her right where you In want her. Danger. Ted Bundy famously, uh, 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 his great gimmick uh, was that he would put his arm in a sling as if he'd yeah. broken his arm and then drop a bunch of papers. Yeah, and be <laughs> like, oh, can you help me? What a crazy, it's like a trap spider, a human trap spider. It is nuts. Or he'd be like, oh, can you just help me like get this into my car or whatever? Because yeah. my arm's broken. And then you just like shove them in the car. What a nightmare. And so Dennis is essentially saying, slash her tires. <laughs> so now she needs you she for needs rides. You. Right. Yeah. Oh my God. Okay. <laughs> or <laughs> also, this is also wild and also so funny. I was not expecting it. Great, a fictional angry neighbor. <laughs> <laughs> I already love it. So you can say that you will take care of them for her. And as an example, they show Dennis outside at a payphone with some sort of voice changer attached to the mouthpiece of the payphone. 
<laughs> and he looks crazy. His eyes are all like nuts. And he says, I'm watching you, you bitch. You're going to die tonight. <laughs> oh, my God. And then they show him showing up at her door. And she, like, runs to him and throws her arms around him. And she's crying. And they show the shot of, like, you know, her back with his face visible. And he's hugging her and smiling. <laughs> <laughs> it's working. And he says, if you've done all the steps properly by this point, she'll want to take the relationship to the next level but now you've got to pull back this is the next end neglect emotionally <laughs> okay stop taking her calls cancel plans at the last minute bring back the fake angry neighbor but now don't be around to protect her. <laughs> <laughs> bring back the fake angry neighbor <laughs> and now they cut to dennis back at the payphone with a voice change <laughs> calling her and saying welcome to hell <laughs> and her taking the phone call and crying <laughs> he says this will make her question her self-worth and self-esteem oh so God. now it's time to i inspire hope you want to come back and tell her that you went away because you were so scared of how strong your feelings were. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, I have had this happen to me. What? Oh, God, yeah. So when you use the dentist system? Yes. At least this part of it, certainly. I was afraid of my feelings. Someone said this to you? Oh, God, yeah. Was it the guy who made that mixtape? Uh no. Someone made Kristen a, a mixtape and started getting with am a I, spoken word intro. I'm allowed to say this, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Before any tracks began, it was like, "Hey, babe." Well, you know, obviously better than I do. Yeah, I, I don't know what he said. He was like, "Yeah, like, hey, babe. Um, I just made this because I wanted to apologize to you <laughs> and let you know that I will actually always be there for you. And if you let me back in your life." Then I will never let you go. And then <laughs> whatever the next song was, I wish I still had it. And I don't I don't even know what the song was. I don't remember. It sounded like the intro to Jailhouse Rock. <laughs> but it wasn't. It like it went yeah. into like a slow song, but I was like, whoa, what? <laughs> Jailhouse Rock. <laughs> and by that point, I was like really done with him. So it was all very The fun. veil had been lifted and you realized he was a loser. Yeah, I was like, oh no. The same guy told me that uh, I was beating him at Tony Hawk one time. <laughs> This was in high school, I'm, I would like to add. I'm really good at Tony... I don't want to brag, but I'm really good at Tony Hawk. And so I'm doing all these tricks. By the way, I was in high school, he was not, so he's more of a loser. Oh my god, Kristen. Oh my god. I know. So not I, good, by I the was way. doing all these sick tricks. There's like a paragraph of tricks at the bottom of my screen, and he's freaking out. And he's like, okay, all right, well, okay, at least I'm the only one of us who actually knows how to skate, though. And then he goes, all those tricks you're doing, I can do those in real life. And I was like 16, but even I, at that point, yeah. I was like, you can do like a paragraph. You can do a combo of like 38 <laughs> tricks is what you're telling me right now. I used to, oh, I, uh, this guy. Oh, I know. He, he one time, the last piece of work. He was, shit. he was an aspiring dentist, perhaps. I, I uh, yeah, I, uh, the last time I think I ever saw him in real life, I was working at Party City and he had already gotten married and had a kid at this point and he, he was talking to me uncomfortably and then he farted and blamed it on a baby. Yeah. And I and I knew it wasn't the baby, <laughs> and so I I came home and I was like, Kristen, I think you've won. I, I think, think so. you won this relationship. You you've come out yeah. smelling like a, a bed of roses. I think so. You know, farted Especially in front of me then. and tried to blame a child. <laughs> oh, it's so funny. Oh my god. A fool. That was something. I think you were like a like tr a true 13, 14 with that Tony Hawk thing. Happened. That was that, I couldn't believe it. And not listen, it took me a long time to to get normal, uh -huh. or to stop being like a, also an idiot. But even at thirteen, he was I was like minimum nineteen. Even at thirteen, I was like, this guy's a this he's this I guy know. sucks. I know. <laughs> yeah. I know. I've got no excuse for being. <laughs> I wish. Do you still have that that mixtape? No, no, Damn I don't it. think so. I, I feel like I have multiple times mourned not having it. What a sad, that is lost to time. Not just the disc, but the notion of like, does anyone? I don't know. I, Probably I, I not. I don't know if we have any high school listeners. I guess you Are can make people, a playlist on Spotify. Do you share a playlist, a Spotify playlist? People like do. I made this Sp the Spotify playlist for you? Maybe. People Girl. make people make Spotify playlists and share them like for fun. It's a shame that you can't include an, a, a bespoke personalized MP3 at the start of it. Hey, babe. 
God, I would love to. This still is for have you, that. and this is why you make my heart go chumba wumba, <laughs> and then it goes to the next track. You know, I would love to still have that. Oh my God! What a shame. Oh, it totally is. Okay. Um, I can do all these tricks for real. <laughs> okay. Loser. Go do them. So do them. Stop playing with me. There's no way he could. By the way. Well, not only for a multitude of reasons, I don't believe he could do anything with a skateboard except look at it. No. But also, um, I don't know if anyone's familiar with the game Tony Hawk. It's like almost cartoonish how much can be done in that game. I would say it's quite advanced. Yeah. It, the things it's in that game Tony are, Hawk's tricks. are mostly impossible in real life. <laughs> it was a, for a multitude of reasons, it was a ludicrous thing to say to me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Okay, so... So you inspire hope. Yeah, inspire hope. Um, yeah, you. I wanna... was afraid of my feelings. <laughs> yeah, you're afraid of my feelings. So in Dennis's case with the pharmacist, he went so far as to do this step standing outside her window for maximum impact. <laughs> um, I will say that same guy did show up outside my window one night. And I said, get out of here. <laughs> what are you doing here? Go home. I really did. I was like, you no, did? go. Thank God. It was very empowering, actually. That guy was such an asshole. It sucked. Um, afterward, you get to... <laughs> okay. <laughs> I was saying this very matter of fact. It's not. It, this is not good. None of it's good. Afterward, you get to have sex. And it's intense because the woman thinks that they have broken through your hard exterior and you're no longer afraid to love. But then it's time for the last step, which Mac is able to finish for the group. Separate entirely. <laughs> this comes up later when the gang goes to their high school reunion and Dennis is chatting up. Oh, so, yeah. In, so in that in that episode, Mac just says, this is the final step. Separate entirely. Right. And they're all like, oh, OK, we know what that is. So I have transitioned into a future episode. OK. So now this comes up later when the gang goes to their high school reunion and Dennis is chatting up a former crush from high school and she rejects him because she's surprised that he's even hitting on her now because she thought until that very moment that he was gay and also she's married and she references the fact that she thought he was gay because he's wearing makeup and a girdle and also he's been gossiping with her for the last 20 minutes so she says you're wearing makeup and he's like yeah i want to look my best and she's like and you're wearing a girdle and he's like yeah who doesn't want to look a little bit slimmer or whatever and she's like and you've been gossiping with me for the last 20 minutes and he says yeah i have a system and i was speeding through the steps i was demonstrating value on the dance floor i engaged you physically by putting my hands on your head I've been nurturing your dependence by letting you talk about your shitty husband. And he starts to make a scene. <laughs> he loses it. He goes nuts. And it's a total record scratch where everyone is staring at him. I was demonstrating value. <laughs> of course, I was demonstrating Nobody knows value. what the hell he's no. talking about. Um, and then he goes out to his car. He's fuming. Like, everybody's staring at him. He's just like, every vein in his body is showing. And he's just like, Argh. And the gang is all hanging out in the parking lot, kind of by his car. He doesn't say anything to them. He just marches by him and them. And he rips open the car of his trunk and lifts up a secret compartment where he removes duct tape, <gasps> zip ties, saran wrap, gloves, and a camcorder. And the whole group is just looking at him like, what the hell is happening? And Mac is like, what is that? And Dennis, now crazed, answers, these are his tools. He has to have his tools. And they're like, why do you have those? And he's like, I like to be tied up. I like to tie people up. These are my tools or whatever. Oh. And they talk him out of using them. Yes. Finally. Okay. And they're like, we'll, we'll, we'll figure something out. We'll, we'll have another plan for revenge. And that's kind of like where it ends. And they, they go in and do something else together that is not all violent. So we've got a man yeah. who views the world as a, a, a con. Yes. As a, a, a series of interactions. How do things to get what he wants without his, any regard for the other person's feelings? Yes. He's very manipulative. Yeah. And his, in his trunk, he's got zip ties, <laughs> saran wrap, And duct tape. him saying he likes to tie people up. It was clearly a thing in the moment for, that he was like... I like to be tied up. I like to tie other people up. He was trying to make it into a sex oh, thing. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Um, which, you know, who knows? But it was him giving, making an excuse for why he has these things. It comes off very uh, Dennis Rader. Yes. <laughs> very the BTK. Yes. The secret compartment also goes unanswered. 
oh, really? There's never a better no. explanation. No. Yeah, it's those moments. It's the, it's the explosive moments where he has these grandiose visions of himself. I believe there's some moment where he refers to himself as a golden god. Yes, it's during that episode. He keeps freaking out and talking about how he's a golden god. So he's also, and that to me, I think, speaks to and that. And also throughout the series. That Zodiac concept mm-hmm. of like, I am bigger yeah. than man. Yeah. I am a Superman. Yeah. In, in and everybody essence. should bend to me. Yes. Yes. Uh, yeah, his temper has reared its head uh, numerous times. <laughs> yes. Uh, it has. There it was also, very concerning. There was also a time where he and D were plotting to scare somebody by making them think that they were going to kill them. It was the waitress, I think. Yeah, it was the waitress. And D was very clear on the fact that they were. this was just going to be a ruse. And Dennis thought they were going to actually do it. And he seemed very disappointed when he realized that they weren't actually going to go through with it. Right. Um, this doesn't really speak necessarily to Dennis's potential murderous instinct, but it's worth mentioning that there is an episode that was kind of a take on The Shining um, where Dennis really goes quite mad. We have an image on the screen that is from that episode. This is a take on The Shining? Yeah, it's it's a Shining homage. What scene in The Shining is this? (laughs) (laughs) Kristen's pointing at our TV where Dennis appears nude, shrieking at somebody. Like, you can see... Every tendon yeah. in his neck is bulging. He he looks like a wild animal. Yeah, he's unhinged. Perhaps not this moment. I don't remember this. <laughs> you remember Jack Nicholson? We doing just this? watched The Shining recently, and I don't recall. So not this moment, but uh, there's an episode. I think it's called um, Dennis and Mac Move to the Suburbs. Okay. Because. Um, there's they like get kicked out of their apartment for some reason and they can't find anything that's affordable except for in the suburbs and d charlie and frank are like there's no way you're gonna last if you can last 30 days in the suburbs we'll pay your rent for the rest of the year or whatever so they move out to the suburbs and they go slowly mad like um like jack does in the shining and um at one like for example, they they get a dog, and Charlie ends up killing the dog. Oh my <laughs> god! It. And um, this this guy who in the picture that nobody can see, but as we'll describe, it's Dennis shrieking at somebody. This is a neighbor who keeps saying "hot enough out here for you." Yeah. Uh, over and over, and this particular day, the guy says "hot enough out here for you," and Dennis slowly takes off all of his clothes. <laughs> On the front lawn. On the front lawn, walks up to the neighbor and just screams in his face. And they do this weird thing where it is like Dennis's actual scream, but they lay over like a demonic sounding scream on top of it. So it's just like, ah, or whatever. Um, And yeah, like over time in the house, it's falling into more and more disrepair. They are both getting more and more (laughs) pale. Um, They end up fighting. And like, I think that one of them is chasing the other one with a fire poke thing. Oh, okay. Um, it's good fun. Understood. Understood. Yeah. So do we do we think that there is any fire in all the smoke around Dennis? So surprising to me, I look, I would say <laughs> that there seems to be, because there are also references you to You think him he's not, killed. I don't think he's I don't think he's killed. You think he's killed and he will kill again. Do I think he's killed? You know what? I do think he's killed. Really? You think that this man has murdered people? Uh, Now, I will say, last week, we I'll spoil it now. I think it's fair to say. We're at the end of this episode, and last week I wanted to tease it and not just reveal it. Right. Last week we talked about Arrested Development. You know, I can -hmm. can still couch it enough. And a main character who is revealed at the end to be a literal murderer. Mm -hmm. And how I feel like that actually, like, upends the table. It it doesn't make it fun anymore. Right. That he's literally a murderer. Yes. I think Dennis might be the exception where I I think if he were to explain Mm -hmm. in his own language how he did something and and that he, you Mm -hmm. know, didn't think anyone would ever find out about. And so you're all going to forget about it, too. If he, like, menaced everyone and he was like, you didn't see me do that. Right. Like, and they all just decided to move on as a group. Yes. I think I might accept it if we revealed that Dennis had killed. I think he has killed. Honestly. (laughs) (laughs) I do. Which which flies in the face of what Glenn Howerton has said. Yeah. That is who plays Dennis. There's an there's an It's Always Sunny podcast. Right. With Glenn Howerton, um, Rob McElhenney, 
and Charlie Day, who play Charlie, Mac, and Dennis. And on the podcast, Glenn Howerton, who plays Dennis, said that he he knows that people talk about Dennis being a psychopath. Obviously, I mean, they, they make it that way. They right. want people to think that. And he said he At doesn't... At some point, Dennis says, I had a feeling, Mac. Do you remember having yes. feelings as a kid? Yes. Mac's like, I have feelings every day. <laughs> like, it doesn't right. unrelate to the idea that Dennis doesn't have emotions, which is what they say about serial killers. Right. And I didn't write the quote down. It's just something very little. It was kind of like almost in passing. But he says that he doesn't think that Dennis is a psychopath. And he cites something where Dennis talks about feeling something or, or something like that. Okay. Um, I, look, obviously that must be true if he says it's true because he is the writer of this. He's the character. But this seems like a psychopath to me. And I think he has killed. I think he's killed. And I think that he could kill again. <laughs> I, I do too. I, I he's a not, dangerous man. He's a dangerous person. Yeah. Uh, I don't think that anybody should be around this man. I think he's gotten away with it. Uh, there have now been, uh, it was announced in the last week or two mm -hmm. that, um, I don't remember what studio owns this, but it's been announced that there's going to be a new New season? A, no, no. A, a new um, American Psycho. Oh, was it? Is it official? I read. I that... believe it's official. Okay. And many people have said like it is Glenn Howerton's time. <laughs> like his time has come, <laughs> because he is so crazy. Like you described him as He's being so like good. handsome and and, mm -hmm. and charming and whatever. But this like this undercurrent of, of psychopathy at it is incredible. It's so good. I did so there's there's something very specific that I had decided to leave out of this because I was just like, I don't know if it's gonna translate me explaining it. It's very dark. There's a YouTube clip from oh, it's, it's always sunny. It might even be it might even be the name of an episode. It's called The Implication. Yes, um, right. It's very funny in context. I would say go look it up for an example of this kind of thing. I just thought that it might not translate. Uh yeah, he he talks about uh how another great system of his to get women is that he takes them out on a boat yeah. <laughs> and then propositions them. And he's like, and they could have, of course say no, but they're not going to say no because of the implication. Right. <laughs> the implication being that they'll be left out at sea. And he just kind of like goes into more and more detail about it like is so dark the danger of the implication. And deranged the implication. <laughs> And he's like staring with these dead eyes at Mac. Like it, it's very uncomfortable. It is. It's so funny. Perfectly uncomfortable. Yeah, yeah. And I think that if you, you know, if you accessed that in him mm -hmm. without the comedic side, right. which I do think he would be capable of as a performer. I think so too. I think he could probably be a really good Patrick Bateman. He honestly probably could. He's Psycho. great at this. I think he'd be really there, good. There are clips for um, YouTube compilations of... Dennis being like psychotic in the show notes if you're curious. Incredible. The implication might even be in there. I might have just included it. <laughs> Absolutely incredible. Yeah. Uh the last thing that I'll say is that I, I've noticed um I think that I think that uh who plays Mac? Rob McElhenney. Uh -huh. Um he has talked about how uh he did a couple of seasons of It's Always Sunny where like there was like a whole season where he got fat. Mm-hmm. And he's, he described it where he was like, I noticed watching all these shows, like you watch Friends or Seinfeld, and everyone gets better looking right. as the show goes on because they all are rich and they take better care of themselves and mm -hmm. they get plastic surgery. And he's like, I just thought it'd be funny to look worse as the show went on. Right. <laughs> so what I'm going to say is that I think if you're doing American Psycho today, mm -hmm. in 2025, it'll probably be your six. Yeah. And you, if you if you don't have it be an '80s movie, mm -hmm. if you have it be about a modern day yuppie, yeah, I think that he might play even better because Glenn Howerton looks yeah. very now and looks very clean and yeah. like put together. He has looked better and better as the show went on, yeah, because he he's got money yeah. and stuff. Mm -hmm. I actually feel like him being already in good shape and well to do and taking such good care of himself and right, stuff right. might actually enhance modern day Patrick Bateman yeah. to then undercut it with how vicious <laughs> how vicious he truly is <laughs> vicious is, is a really good word <laughs> he's, for him. he's vicious he is he is so there you go two he mad men he's to be locked away opposite ends he's of the he's not safe no he's not safe he's not a safe man he's no. not a well man no two two individuals who I think might be on the furthest ends of the spectrum now that I'm thinking about it, I think you're right. Toby Flenderson and uh, Dennis Reynolds. <laughs> yeah, Toby, who can barely open his mouth to to speak, and Dennis, who is a coiled snake. Absolutely. 
he is a primal scream of a man. But are there any other sitcom uh, psychopaths that uh, that we have not addressed? Oh, if you can think of any, by all means, please email us at gttupod at gmail.com. That is by far the best way yes, to get at us. Absolutely. Um, uh, we've already covered Crazy Joe Davola from mm-hmm. Seinfeld. Yep. Uh, but I would love to know about more. Are there killers hiding in plain sight on your favorite silly show? Oh, I'd love to hear about it. Um, and uh, yeah, thank you all so much for hanging out with us. Yeah. From here, please consider sharing the show with some friends, write a tweet or something, who knows? Yeah. Uh, check out our Patreon, patreon.com slash gttupod. Find a tier that fits you. Mm-hmm. Get access to our Discord. Get access to the Netherworld Dispatch. Such a fun show to do. Go check it out. Um, follow at gttupod on all social media. We post as we've got new stuff coming out. And you can also follow us. Yep, I'm at Chillin' Kristen. I'm at The Myth Traveler. So, we'll be back next week with more scary fun. Mm. But until that time comes, we must travel. Back to the netherworld, go we. It's been bothering me. Ed Kemper was the co-ed killer. Oh, okay. Yeah, it didn't sound totally right no, to me. It wasn't yeah, right like, at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At all. At all. What did you say? Like I the... was way off. <laughs> What did you say? Do you remember? It's like the sorority oh, yeah, uh-huh. slasher or yeah. something, but no, he's the co-ed so, killer. Yeah. Put some respect on his name. <laughs> <laughs> These are sick, oh, God. sick individuals. Sick. Not good. <laughs>